Action! All right, we are bringing back New Release Wednesdays, NSFW, that's not safe for work. Basically, in this new version of the show that we're bringing back, me, Rob, Patrick, Rob, give us a I'm really watching out for him with the Wolverine Claws right now. I'm it's somewhat dangerous. not going to put my eye out or your eye out. So, uh, basically, I tell you <laughs> hey, all right, 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 so basically, th- with us bringing it back, there's some content that we can't fit into our regular show, so mm. we wanted to kind of, you know, bring back the NSFW to kind of push it into there, because we still want to talk on it. Still get the and word all out. the ladies get all the time now. They don't ever let me get on camera. They push me off and rob, you know, all my friends even with them being married to the other Take house, it, you know, no. Really? It's Wait about us, not you. To ask you. So, when to go, I forgot this is Rob and I getting some love now. Okay, whatever. Because you can As find we get that the on the internet, from the, the lovely host to the You science. can find that on the internet. Where are we going with this, pal? All right, so basically, just, you know, again, some additional content that we wanted mm. to talk about, but we couldn't fit it. So um, for me, first off, actually, no, I'm going to throw it to you, you know, gentlemen, first. Uh, you, we were talking the other day. We had a barbecue, and I mentioned, uh, no, you mentioned um, the Fox. graphic audio. Well, gra- before it gets graphic audio, uh, the Jason Aaron, because I know you're such a big fan. Oh, John Hickman. So, no, it's John something Hickman, that John was John, finally it was, it was, confirmed. So in, 20, in, in May of 2015, mm-hmm. everybody's getting down to the whole fact that, like, Marvel, it's it's not Ike Perlman, but Marvel. The rights of the studio was saying, don't talk about the Fantastic <laughs> Four. We're going to curtail the Fantastic Four. And what was happening in the summer of 2015? Well, let's Wars. rewind it back a little bit more. Okay. As, as all of us know, Marvel Entertainment, you know, created all these characters. Right. But then they licensed out these characters to different studios. In order to fight bankruptcy <laughs> in the late 90s. You're going way bad, dude. Too much information. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. No, that is true. But Marvel controlled a certain amount of characters. Right. Basically, the X Men franchise was lent out to Fox, Fox, Spider Man with Sony, Sony and uh, oh, Fox, as well as Fantastic Four Fox, Hulk to Universal, and and it was thus quick. far cinematically the biggest franchises were coming out of Fox with the X Men and the Fantastic Four franchises. Yeah. However, not really done well with Fantastic Four. And and so the whole terms of the condition is as long as they have movies out every set years, they can retain the rights to them. That's yes. why the latest Fantastic Four sucked. Yeah. Oh, also let's throw in the Ghost Rider ownership and the Punisher ownership. Daredevil. All that. Daredevil. Electra. <clears throat> so all that happened. Marvel got better. They realized that you know they needed better control and we saw better results in movies. With they, they did not believe Marvel Iron controlling Man, exactly. around the time Iron Man led that, that way, movie. you know, and then they just made him. An, I mean, Robert Downey and, and, Jr. And, and so we saw that we saw better films with Marvel having more control, yeah. which then led to um, the benefit of these movies. Obviously, when people like the film, they want to read the source material. So the comics were getting some of that follow on love again so, because of the movies. Yeah. However, um, Marvel seeing this and seeing how you know. Fox and what they're doing with the franchises, you know, let's put more of our fair and, and love into some of these other titles and bring that up to speed to let that get some love. So that's how, like, a Newman started getting that build and that pushed Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And so those uh, properties started to get more love now. Ant-Man, you know, some of these other ancillary characters, because we already sold Guardians, our big tentpole Guardians of the things. Galaxy. Exactly, Guardians of the Galaxy. So, you know, brilliant move on Marvel's part to, to, to get that control, but now... Something that we've seen is like, okay, with them obviously doing that, we've seen kind of like the spite, within comic, the spite <laughs> happen with the X-Men yeah. stuff the, in, within comic book form and Fantastic Four. Let's recreate t-shirts from, from series from the 80s, but we're going to erase the Fantastic Four. We're yes. going to erase the X-Men. Spider-Man's going to be there because mm-hmm. Marvel's retained the merchandise rights to Spider-Man. But that's about yes. it. Wolverine disappears and Rocket Raccoon's in his place. The Thing disappears and She-Hulk is in his place. Yes. And you've got Tom Brevoort, uh, editor at Marvel, who's like... Ah, uh, no, there's no spite. And then half a year later is like, if you have the rights to a character where you're going to get 100% of the funding, and then another character we have to debate for the funding, mm-hmm. who are you going to put on your t-shirt? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's black and white. I understand the business behind that. Yes. It's just, it's so... And that's what we're seeing solidified in the latest tweet by Jonathan Hickman. John Hickman... That, uh, that strained relationship is strained. It's, it, I, I don't... He had an interview with Bleeding Cool, mm-hmm. and he's talking about in 2015, John Hickman did the, la- not the last event book, but the big event book in 2015, and that's the same time DC had all their multiverse things going on, mm-hmm. and Marvel did the exact same thing. You had a comic about X-Men from 90, the X-Men cartoon from the 90s. You had Age of Apocalypse revisited. You had Secret Wars, revi- not Secret Wars, uh, uh, Civil War, and all that crap. And to the side, John Hickman is writing the main storyline. Mm-hmm. What happens at the end of Secret Wars? Reed Richards, Sue Richards, their kids disappear forever, 
the Thing joins the Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. and Johnny Storm becomes an Inhuman, and the Fantastic Four book is canceled. Two years later, what do they confirm? That editorial is looking at Hickman, who wrote, he was one of the last people to write Fantastic, he wrote four years, right? Yep. He, he killed Johnny, he did simultaneously have the Fantastic Four book, as well as the Future Foundation, which made Doctor Doom and Spider-Man a member <laughs> of the team, yep. and... He, he's being told from editorial from the get-go, we are standing down this book to spite Fox. No, oh, I, I think there's good and bad in that. I think eventually, um, you know, well, the good is that we're seeing some of these other, you know, properties get some bigger treatment that we wanted to see because they deserved it. Yeah. And we've had, you know, Fantastic Four had their run. You know, X Men had their run. There was a the larger, you know, growing yeah, up know as a kid. What's, what's Avengers the, didn't get enough love as compared to them. Now yeah. Avengers have t kind of taken over, and so we're seeing some of these other properties. Let's do a story, but, a, a branch wide story called you know? Avengers vs X Men, where the X Men lose. <laughs> where, where the hell are you going? You would have never thought that as a child of the nineties with yeah. the Fox. They're demonizing. You know, the it's, it's kind of crazy. They don't have any more. I, I think you know, all in due time, you know, it, we're mm. gonna, it's 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 an evolution. We're gonna see some changes, but. At the same time, you know, Fox has, you know, because they got Ryan Reynolds with the Deadpool stuff, that has really brought the X Men brand back highest, up. Highest with what they're doing. So movie of all time. There's good and bad all in that. So we'll see. The, you know, the, there's a lot there going. Um, yeah. So uh, Graphic up. Audio is a local um, company that puts together Dramatic. essentially amazing audio versions of some of your favorite novels and now as well as comic books and I wouldn't say now because they've been doing it for a while a and movie. I have a friend that for actually uh, works for them uh, quite a few friends actually that work for Graphic Audio I'm hoping to work for Graphic Audio myself but um, Contact my, Patrick, my buddy over here sure. has been listening to it and come to find out they're like we, yeah those are my friends that was really cool so, we're, we're driving cross country give them a little bit of info coming back in March we stop at a truck stop and I'm looking through like the audio tapes and staring back in the face is never mind another copy of Deliverance 5 Giggity giggity, but you've got uh, Days of Future Past, you have the death of Captain America, you have all these retelling from modern day stories, so I bought the Days of Future Past one, it was five hours, mm -hmm. and they took the Claremont comics and gave added some depth to them, but it was phenomenal, got on their website, and they've got, you know, 30 titles they've done for Marvel Comics, 30 titles they've done for DC Comics, and it's not just your boring audiobook, no, they actually have special effects, they sound effects, they full cast, yeah. Everything now, I, I I will say, I'm really irritated for whatever reason when a story goes to present tense and doesn't tell the story in past tense. Gotcha. So for Batman, oh god, what was the Batman story, Patrick? I just finished it yesterday. <laughs> it was Inferno. Okay. Batman Inferno is told in present tense. That kind of gets out of the way. It's like the Robert Kirkman Walking Dead novels that he works yeah. on with Tyler. What's his? When they're all told in present tense, for some reason that pulls me out of it. But it was, was was Inferno a fun story? Inferno is a damn fun story. Secret Wars. They did the adaptation of the 1980 Secret Wars. That that one. Everything. So should, that, was it the way they presented it, or how they they spoke? They, it was. It was they, kind they, of they a bit, should like, talk a different way. It, it. You know, think back to the the comics of the 1960s, where every sentence ended with an exclamation point. Uh -huh. And we have a bunch of guys, and they're 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 yeah. they're, they're costumes going back and forth, and you and I are going back and forth. Except you're answering to the Incredible Hulk, and yeah. I am the spectacular She Hulk, mm -hmm. and we have to go back and forward. Identifying like you can't be like Bruce and Jen. It's just like, ah, Incredible Hulk. I don't know about oh, that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Amazing yeah. Spider-Man has found that he's got <laughs> webbing up his ass, and yeah, that kind of pulls a little different. It looks great on the comic page. Did but they, you don't did need they, to do that. Did they commit to it? They committed the hell to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Graphicaudio.com, and if you look them up, and if you buy like five of their audio, and they're twelve, thirteen bucks for five to six hours of entertainment. Yes. I just downloaded. Uh, they did an, a, a, a ten hour adaptation of Greg Rucka's Batman's No Man Land. Okay. And that's like going back to that story and hearing how they're doing that and the presentation for it so far did bomb. All right. That's phenomenal. Check out Graphic Audio and I would be remiss to not give a shout out to James Lewis, uh, my actor friend who is the voice of Nightwing with Graphic Audio. He's oh, the voice of Green Lantern. He's the voice of a ton of characters. But shout out to James. Who's, he's the one that told me about the company and dude got me involved Can't in endorse him all of that. So shout out to Graphic Audio. Um, last puppies. but not least, I want to, um, something that gets me through my day hmm. and I'm sure we'll hopefully, and actually I want to recommend this to you because you're getting ready to hopefully start a new job. All Fingers about crossed. It. All about Fresh it. out the Marine Corps. 
Um, what gets me through my day at work is a good podcast. Okay. And I listen to quite a few and uh, check it out through YouTube as well if I can download it. But because I work in a secure environment, I can't exactly bring sure. that iPod yeah. in. So I listen to that stuff on the ride home. But we're actually able to access YouTube at, at, uh, on uh, the installation. So yeah. thankfully, yeah. I know some places got to watch out, but yeah. I throw that on the other yeah. side of the screen. Yeah. Um, the Breakfast Club, I'm a big hip hop guy slash uh, talk radio guy, and The Breakfast Club out in New York, I check them out on okay. YouTube. Okay. Great show, shout out to Charlemagne and uh, his crew over there. Um, love The Breakfast Club. Another channel uh, that I like is Joe Rogan. Loved him from Fear Factor and everything oh, he man. does in the he, MMA he, stuff. He, he, had, uh, he has a great podcast James with some Maynard great Keenan, guests. Uh, God, the was... Joe Rogan Experience, J-R-E. Yeah. yeah. Check it out. Hell yes. Love Joe Rogan. Absolutely. Uh, another great podcast. Of, and and the rest of this is pretty much all comedians. I love, I need comedy to get me through the mm. crazy, hectic Intel day that I have. Um, Joey Diaz, who's a frequent guest on Joe's uh, podcast. But Joey Diaz, The Church, where he kind of does the same thing uh, that Joe Rogan does. But Joey Diaz is like this old Cuban guy. that I, I think he was like on The Sopranos, but he's, he looks like one of those old Italian guys. He's just... You know, yeah, he, he brings kind of that, that those, some he brings some of that kind of gravitas, and he's hilarious. The Church of Joey Diaz. Okay. Uh, another great podcast is Tiger Belly um, with Bobby Lee, who you know from Mad TV days, and his girlfriend Kayla. Yeah, yeah, um, I remember Bobby. I love Bobby and yeah. Kayla. They're an amazing podcast. Check them out, as well as his brother Steve Lee, the Stevie Weeby Show, and uh, they kind of cross over and do a lot of fun stuff. So, does Mike Rowe have those are podcasts? some good stuff. Mike Rowe from the Dirty Jobs. Yeah, I, I don't know. No, but I would be interested. Like in that. his Facebook posts are always so fascinating. If that man had a podcast, yeah. I, would, I would start there. But no, I'd start after Patrick's recommendation. <laughs> and so after that, I would go to Micro. So check those out. Those are just some great comedy podcasts that get me through my day. If you listen to all of those uh, podcasts, that'll get you through your entire eight-hour day. If you work, uh, recommend so some more to us. Check it out. Yep. Comments and shit. So that's NSFW. Tweets, Facebook comments. Rob, Patrick. Head. We may come back next week if we have some more recommendations or just some other stuff we want to rant on. Or we, stuff we can't fit on the show. Because, These are you know, so fun. Randy and Liz, Buy man. some for your kids. Those gals. We out of here.